Hey everyone, today I am going to be showing how to make a simple platformer in Scratch. In this game, you play as a little apple, and you can see for the animation, you can jump and it'll squash, and then when you fall, it'll kind of look down. But you can see that there's, of course, floor collision, jumping movement, there's ceiling collision, and of course, wall collision. And not only that, if I go ahead and jump up here, you can even see that there's slope detection. And if the slope gets too high, it'll count it as a wall and it won't let us go up. There is a hitbox system, so you can see that the stem here overlaps so that way it doesn't get stuck on little things. And on top of all the basic stuff, as you can see, if I go to the right, it loads the next level, and it's pretty basic right now, but you could, of course, make more levels. And as you may notice, the art is not as good as usual. That is because I'm going to be focusing in on the mechanics and all of that stuff over the art. And because you play as an apple in this game, I'm going to call this game A. Paul, because his name's Paul. So if you're excited for today's episode, then make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Codenerd.io. If you want a team of instructors to review your Scratch game, then click on the link below and check out Codenerd.io today. But anyway, let's get coding. Alrighty, so I have two sprites. I have the character, which name is Paul, and then I have a sprite called Ground. Now, in Paul, I have a costume called Hitbox, and it's just a black square. I have a costume called Walk, which is just a little apple. Jump, which is just the apple stretched and kind of looking up, and then Fall, which is just it looking down in a little squash. So just very basic, simple animations that are very easy to make. All you need to do to make the hitbox is make a costume called hitbox, and you're going to want to copy your main sprite in and paste it, and then you're going to want to make this cover the parts you want to collide with. You probably don't want the stem colliding and these little tips here, so you can just cut those off by just making the box a little smaller. Now I'm going to go ahead and find a different costume to show you how I would do this. So say we had this bear as our main player. First of all, I'll make it a little smaller because it's huge. But to make a hitbox, take a box here, I would center it, and then I'll start cutting out the pieces that I don't think they need to be colliding. So like, that's good. I probably just need like that. And definitely the feet are going to want to be lined up and then like a little bit of head and maybe a little bit up so it doesn't pop out. So that is how you're going to make your hitbox. Just make a simple square around your player. Then in the ground, I just have two costumes that are just kind of test levels. It's just a bunch of simple platforms to test all of the different collisions and then two is just another one so we can test the level switching. Now, if you want to use all these costumes, you can check out the link in the description to this game and then check it out. So click on the Paul or whatever your player name is and it pull out a wind green flag clicked. Now we want to go to front so it gets in front of the ground. And now let's pull out a go to block, put it above there, make it go to negative 200, negative 15. Know it, we can even change this to like negative 55 so it's kind of in the middle. You can point in direction 90 so it faces is the right. Now we want to go ahead and forever, and now we can start the movement. Let's make a new for the sprite only variable called x speed. This will keep track of the velocity of our player on the x axis. Now in the very beginning, set that x speed to zero. Now we want to change x speed by key depress. So as you can see, if we show the x speed variable, it starts at zero. And if we press the D key, it increases, but we cannot move left. So to make it be able to move left, all you need to do is add a minus and put this D in the left side. And now put that back, duplicate this and change this side to A. So now you can see that if we press A, it'll go to the left and D will go to the right. Now you may notice that this number is getting huge. So let's limit that. To do this, set x speed to x speed times let's do 0 0.8 so that is a friction algorithm right there as you can see it will go back to zero when we press a or d and it limits it to around four now if we were to set this to like 0 0.99 you can see that when we move it can move a lot faster and it smoothly goes back so the smaller the number is the quicker or less smooth it will be so i'm going to set it to 0 0.8 now this is just a variable and it doesn't actually do anything so to make it actually do something change x by x speed right there now you can see that look at this our player can move around now it is a little bit slow so to change that pull out a times operator and put this in the left side now if you put this in here you can take this times say two and this will make it go twice as fast so now we have a player that's moving twice as fast now there's one issue we can go through walls 
and the small fact that there's no gravity and we can just float and you know that's not quite realistic so to change this make another variable called y speed this will keep track of the velocity of the y so make sure to reset that to zero in the very beginning now change the y speed by a negative number i'm going to do negative two because it gives it a nice snappy quick feeling now change the y by y speed so if we go ahead and test this our player will be infinitely falling off the screen so we need to add a way to check for collision now to do this you need to first move the change y above the change x so put an if else between there and now put the x on the very bottom you can see that we can still move and the gravity still works now we need to check if the y speed is less than zero that means that we are falling down if we are falling down then we are going to repeat until we are not touching the ground change the y by one so this will make it go back up in set the y speed to zero so you can see now when we fall look at that our player will kind of stop on the ground and jitter a little bit now if we pull out a set and set the y speed to like i don't know 15 you can see that it doesn't quite work for jumping up because if we jump up into the wall it'll just start floating upwards so we need to go ahead and add the second parameter which is if we are going up if y speed is not less than zero and the else we want to duplicate that and change y by negative one now you can see if we set the y speed to 15 and we jump into the ceiling it will go the other way how do we fix this jittery horrible looking mess because right now this is not a very playable platformer to fix this we need to make it happen without the screen refreshing now that just means it happens before the screen has a chance to refresh so it will get rid of that jitter now to do this make a custom block simply call this movement because that's kind of what makes sense and make sure you click this run without screen refresh you can put all of this stuff in the movement and then run this movement block in the forever loop so you can see that it really doesn't change that much for coding wise but look at that our player can move around again and it's smooth and if we set the y speed to say i don't know 25 for jumping you can see that it can't go through the ceiling now let's go ahead and add some jumping in underneath this change x by go ahead and check if he w was pressed simply set y speed to a positive value i'm going to do 25 because i found that it's a nice jump height now you can see that when we press it we can jump now there's a slight problem we can actually hold that and infinitely jump and we're basically a bird now so go ahead and add a variable for the sprite only called can jump now we want to check if the key w's press and the can jump is equal to true so only if this variable is true then we can jump now make sure to set can jump to false after we jump so we can't double jump now what we need to do is set can jump to true in this repeat until not touching ground change y by one because that means we are touching the ground but in this other repeat until we want to set it to false because that means that we are colliding with the ceiling and we don't want to be able to stick to the ceiling if we go ahead and test that you can see that we can no longer fly and we can't stick to the ceilings or anything like that now there's one issue if we go to the right and collide with the wall we instantly will teleport up to the top now the way to fix this is by simply adding a slope detection so basically what that means is it will detect if the slope is greater than a set value and if it is we won't be able to move otherwise it'll just simply move us up we need one more for the sprite only variable called slope this will keep track of the slope amount now we want to set the slope to zero at the very bottom and repeat until the slope is equal to eight so that is our maximum the slope can be before it detects it as a wall or we are not touching the ground so that means we've accidentally left the ground then change the slope by one and then change the y by one so all we need to do is check if the slope is equal to eight right here and let's go ahead and say wall so this is detecting that it's a wall and you can see that our apple does doesn't say anything but if we go over here and touch it it will say wall so that means that it is detecting the walls correctly so let's replace this say wall with a change x by x speed times negative one this will move it back to the left then change y by slope times negative one then set the x speed to zero so it stops us from moving again you can now see that if we collide with the wall it won't let us go through and let's test on this wall here we go you can even jump on it let's make sure that the slopes still work here we go you can still walk up the slopes so i'm going to go ahead and hide these variables now that we know that this is all working now there is one more thing that i want to fix you can see that our player is colliding with its actual costume meaning that if we have say a little tail or something like that we can actually stand on that you 
you can see here and we don't want that so that is where the hitbox comes in so in the very beginning of movement we want to switch costume to hitbox and then we want to set rotation style to don't rotate now you can see our apple disappeared right after the movement make a new block called costume and run the costume right after movement then you can switch costume to walk if we jump into the ceiling if you closely look you can see that the stem is overlapping so that's how you know that we are using the hitbox now now the reason this works is it will switch to the hitbox do all of these collisions then once it's done it'll run costume so it'll switch to walk now because this is in a run screen without refresh it will do that all for the frame in so it just looks like it's the apple now there's one thing that bothers me if I go to the left our player doesn't flip so to do this we need to get the input of our player now we could duplicate all these scripts and all that stuff but that's gonna get complex so let's just store it in a variable so let's make the final variable for all of this collision stuff called x input so in the very beginning let's set the x input to key d minus key a make sure you do a set now change x speed by x input times two you can see that if we start the game nothing actually changes but we have this x input being set to the correct numbers now all we need to do point in direction the x input times 90 right here now if we go ahead and do that you can see that it is not working now you may be confused because you can see the direction down here is actually changing now the reason for this is we set the rotation style to don't rotate here so what you need to do is set the rotation style to left right right above we're moving to the left it'll flip to the left now that's all fine but if we move to the left and then let go it'll flip back to the right so let's go ahead and simply add an if the x input is equal to zero and put that in a not that just means if we are moving then we'll do this now you can see if we move to the left it'll stay to the left and if we move to the right it'll stay to the right now that we have all of the costume flipping and the collision stuff we can actually start switching it to the right costume move this point and direction stuff to the very top and now we have this section for costume stuff so go ahead and add an if else checking if the y speed is greater than zero so that means that we are moving up if we're moving up then we want to switch costume to jump so that will make it switch to the jump costume now duplicate this and check if the y speed is less than negative five that means we are moving down then we are going to switch costume to fall otherwise switch costume to walk so you can now see that if we jump it'll switch to the jump and if we fall it will switch costume to the fall costume now to make this a little easier for the jump i'm going to go ahead and write a j and then for the fall i'm going to write an f so if we go ahead and look now when we jump it says j and then when we fall it'll say f so now that we have the player animating and all of that stuff let's work on the level so we want it to be to where when we make it to the right of the screen it will loop us to the left and load a new level now this is actually pretty simple to make what we want to do is have an if statement checking if the x position is greater than 200 which means we are on the right of the screen then we need a new variable called level and make sure you make that for all sprites now we are going to change that level by one make sure you set level to zero in the very beginning so it starts at level one if we show that level variable and go to the right of the screen there we go it is changing the level but it is doing it quite quickly so let's make that not happen to do this add a broadcast message and name this next level so this will load the next level and now when i receive next level let's put it right here we are going to go to negative 200 negative 55 y0 and then we are going to change this to a broadcast and wait now you can see if we go ahead and move to the right you can see that it will change the level by one and put us on the left side of the screen now there is a little issue here it doesn't actually switch the ground to the right costume let's go ahead and go into the ground and add a when i receive next level switch costume to left level and actually I'm sorry you're going to want to set the level to one in the beginning so now you can see that it starts at level one if we go to the right here we go it will load level two and that is awesome now I want to go ahead and reset all of the x speed and all that stuff now the easiest way to do this is just by using this next level on the wind green flag click so get rid of this go to in the next level and then move everything from here except the set level to and the forever loop into the next level and now put the forever up there now this isn't going to reset set everything in the beginning anymore so make sure you broadcast next level underneath the set level to one right here so now you can see that in the very beginning it'll still reset everything but when we move to the right it will also reset our player then now one thing that you can do to improve this our player will sometimes teleport up slightly like it did there when it loads a level the way to make that look better is just by setting the x to negative 200 and getting rid of that go to block so that will make the y stay whatever it is so let's go ahead and test that as you can 
see now, it is now seamless between the levels. You can jump up there and you will spawn up there as well. So I'm going to show you how to add a new level. All you need to do is make another costume. I'll just name this three. Make sure you name it three or whatever number it is. And now let's just design a level. And I'm going to make this wall go all the way up so they can't go to the right and load another level since this is going to be the final level. So if we go ahead and start this game, and look at that, we can load this level and then jump up here and all that stuff. And the one last thing is you can see if we get close to the edge, it will load the next one. And that's because our X position is greater than 200. The way to fix this is by taking out this if right here and checking what this is. So right now you can see that the variable is 246. So let's go ahead and check if it is greater than 240. If we go to the very final level, you can no longer load the next level by touching this wall. And of course, you can adjust all of these values. This is the movement speed so I can take this like times five and now we move quickly and you can adjust the jump height maybe we want it to be five so now you can see it's just a little baby bounce or you can set it to a really 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 big number let's see what happens thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed it then make sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing but anyway this has been Owen and I am out